Hey everybody, Tim here, Gray Man Poda, amateur radio call sign, November Whiskey 9 Foxtrot. So in this video, we're going to try something a little fun, and that's to install the WPSD project uh, to a hotspot and get it on the air and do it in less than 20 minutes. Now this is a fairly simple install, and Chip, the developer of the WPSD project, has done an excellent job in getting this set up and making it very easy. Uh, so regardless of what your skill set is, it, you can find yourself on the air in very short order. And to prove this, like I said, I'm going to do this in under 20 minutes. So to, uh, to get started, we are going to go ahead and put a timer on the screen right here. I am going to do my best to uh, not edit this video in the portion while the clock is running. Now, I might speed it up. To, you know, in the interest of uh, time for the actual length of the video, uh, but I will not chop up any part. So you're going to see uh, step by step how I do this. Uh, and of course, while downloading things like that, uh, files expanding, there might be some time that is going to drag on. So I, I will compress that down, but you will see it in its entirety. So to get started, let's go ahead and uh, get the clock going. And we are going to swing over to the computer here. So the first thing we need to do is get to the page. And I will put a link to that uh, down below. And uh, we are going to need to download the software. Now you can run this on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, you can run it on an Orange Pi. And you can run it on uh, the uh, Nano Pi Neo platform. And then there's a list of other uh, manufactured um, DV Mega, Zoom, stuff like that, that this will also run on. And then there's uh, a couple other, I think, manufacturers that are actually making this uh, software is, is, is actually installed on their specific units. Uh, but in this case, we are using a fresh Raspberry Pi and we are using the MMDVM uh, UHF simplex uh, hat to go on top of the Raspberry Pi. So we are going to download the WPSD uh, RPI latest image for Raspberry Pi. And once it is downloaded, we will go ahead and fire up Bolina Etcher and write that to the um, SD card. Okay, so that is uh, has been downloaded. So from Bolina, we will need to select our image that we just downloaded. We are going to install a fresh SD card into the dingus and insert it into the computer. And as you can see here, it just opened up as H and it's empty so we'll go ahead and close that so we are going to select H and we are going to flash it so while that is running in the background let's go back to the website Now what I am going to do is have it write the WPA supplicant file uh, and I'm going to download it also and I'm going to write it into the boot directory of the uh, SD card once it is completed. Now what that will do for me is when I install this, uh, it's automatically going to connect to the wireless network Gray Man Poda and use this password that I've got here. Uh, to connect it to the internet. This will uh, this will um, like other ones create its own hotspot and uh, you can connect to it with a phone or computer uh, just like you would another you know uh, hotspot or, or uh, wireless router and then go in and, and connect it to your home uh, wireless that way. This way is a little bit easier mm -hmm. and it's not overly complicated, but uh, 
there's a, uh, a link on there. You go in, you type in the SSID of your wireless, you type in your, your passphrase. You want to make sure that if you're here in the United States that you select United States. Every country has different regulations on wireless frequencies and the, um, the amount of power they can use. So uh, you want United States and you want to hit generate config file. It's going to create your config file based on the information you put in, and you're going to download that config file. So as you can see now, that has put that in the uh, downloads directory. And uh, Belina is, is validating the image now, so that should be just a few seconds here and it will be done. Now, once this is done, it will uh, eject the SD card from the computer so it becomes unavailable in File Manager. So what I need to do is pull the dingus, put the dingus back in, and H drive becomes available again. So now we have all the files that uh, was just expanded and put on there. And I'm going to take the WPA supplicant and I'm just going to drag it into that folder. And then I can right click on it and select eject. So now it has ejected it. I'm going to take the SD card and I'm going to insert it. into the Raspberry Pi. I'm going to do a couple things. Switch over here to the HDMI. And to plug it in. We'll be able to see the boot sequence. Now, I'm not going to uh, configure it through the console directly. I'm going to use the web interface. But this does give us a good idea of what's going on um, with it, that, that process. Sometimes, you know, it, it'll probably take about five minutes altogether for that to happen. Um, and then, uh, then it's ready for you to log into via web interface. Okay, so uh, we've got the WPSD login screen uh, for uh, the Pi Stars, the console screen. Uh, like I said, we are not going to uh, log in through the Raspberry Pi console, but uh, if you look here, there is um, a couple of things. The IP address is 10.10.200.198, and um, if your network supports it and allows you to uh, write DNS entries or local DNS entries, Pi Star or Pi Star Local should be available. It depends on the brand of uh, wireless router uh, that you have uh, behind it. So your mileage may vary with that. But what will work is the IP address that was assigned. So let's go ahead and uh, go back over to computer here and open up a web browser and we are going to go to 10.10.200.198 and this is the initial uh, dashboard screen that you will get when you first start this up 
um, you will get some information here across the top CPU load, uh, CPU temperature very um, important to pay attention to and, and some other stuff that we can talk about here in a minute uh, the first entry you need to do is is uh, the host name default is pi dash star uh, you can name it whatever you want, uh, make it unique to yourself. I actually use gray man or gray, uh, gray dash star node call sign. This is going to be your call sign. So I will put my call sign in here <clears throat> and then immediately underneath that, the number three, one, one, eight, four, eight, four populated. And that's actually my DMR ID. Uh, if you do not have a DMR ID, you need to go to radioid.net. There's actually a link out here on the side that will take you there. Um, but you will need to have that to be part of the DMR uh, network. Uh, from radioid.net, you can also get an NXDN uh, ID. If you do not have a DSTAR one, uh, you will need to, to, to get one, and I will put a link to that down below. Um, YSF or System Fusion, you do not need an ID. It's just your call sign uh, and everything. Now, this uh, first entry here will depend on what type of a modem board you have. Do you have a simplex or a duplex? Uh, most people have simplex ones. You could have a duplex one. Mine is uh, set to simplex. Radio frequency, uh, I'm just going to use the default frequency that's in here, 431.150. Make sure it's the appropriate frequency uh, for your location, depending on what country you're in. And um, also make sure that you have a modem board that's appropriate for that frequency. So if you have a VHF board and this is a UHF frequency, uh, that could potentially cause you some problems. Radio modem type, you'll just need to pull that down and select what type of modem you have. That should be on the documentation that you get when you when you buy it. Uh, my particular one is the STM32.DVM. Uh, it's a, you know the Raspberry Pi uh, a hat, and they're connected to the GPIO pins. Modem baud rate is 115200. Go ahead and leave that the same. Unless you're using maybe another one, you'll just need to check the documentation that comes with it. Uh, in my case, my time zone is not um, Chicago. So I'm going to put Indianapolis in. And update notifier. This basically lets you know if there's updates. Uh, and you will see something up here in the top corner when you log into the thing if there's outstanding updates fill in your latitude and longitude um, town country if you've got a url you can put those in here um, aprs gateway you can turn that on if if you want to um, have this act as an aprs gateway if you are running gps um, device you can actually instead of filling in your latitude longitude you can actually push that data in uh, or push that data up right from the the uh, gps here's where you want to turn on which modes you're going to be using so i'm going to turn on dstar ysf um, and uh, dmr for right now here's some hang times and stuff that you might have to adjust if you're having some issues so far i haven't found anything uh, radio cross modes, if you're going to do cross moding between different platforms, you would do it in here. MMDVM display. Now, my MMDVM had a display on it, so uh, it was integrated in. It's the uh, OLED Type 3.96 inch screen. And this is the device address. It's TTY AMA0. And then I can select one of four formats for the, how the information is presented on the screen. Um, and then here's some options, whether you want the screen on all the time or not, whether you want to scroll the display, um, rotate the display, invert the display, depending on how you're, you mount this, you, you might be interested in something like that. Node access control. Um, 
firewall configuration for you to get out most newer firewalls and you know routers uh, support the UPnP uh, protocol and that generally will open up the ports that you need to to, to have this bi-directional communication just like being able to get information out to the internet you also need to have it come back in so uh, you can bring radio transmissions from outside of you know the your home and so it'll broadcast over the uh, the hotspot if you do not use the WPA supplicant file you can uh, go in here to the wireless configuration configure Wi-Fi it's going to scan find all of the hotspots that are available or the the wireless access points that are available and you would select it and add your password just like you would on a computer or a phone tablet that type of thing and then here's some some information about it and really the only other thing that you might want to do although I would recommend doing this after you get everything is set up is uh, change the password now the default password is Raspberry uh, Pi Star and Raspberry is the the account information for the admin once you get it all set up I would change it to something that uh, is a little bit more appropriate so apply the changes um, this will refresh once those are done there is a, uh, a profile thing that you can you can set up um, also and uh, you know I, I put a just a basic description in and save it you can set up multiple profiles if you wanted to and, and switch between those um, I've, I've only got one so it's not that big of a deal <clears throat> Once you uh, are up and running, if you go to the admin page, you'll see the status of uh, the various networks that you've turned on and their network status. And then you can go in here and um, kind of set those up. So for example, for YSF, uh, by default, it's linked to the um, America Link Wires X room. And, um, if there's traffic on it it'll actually now start coming over the radio but what I want to do um, is actually go to the toads room if I could type and I can search it real quick and select link and what we'll see happen is it is actually now linking to toads D star same thing I can go in and I can select reflectors that I want to connect to um, link and unlink not not anything uh, crazy DMR did I turn DMR on I did turn DMR on We'll skip DMR for for the moment. Point is, is fiddle with it. You'll you'll be able to figure it out. Um, you can do a lot of things in here. You firewall, cron. You can turn the RF remote control on and off. Services watchdog. There's a lot of features in here, and I recommend uh, you know looking at uh, the the information that's available on Chip site. So the last thing that we need to do, and I just want to do this real quick here because we've got about 30 seconds left is uh, go to our dashboard key up November Whiskey 9 Foxtrot monitoring the modes 
monitoring the Toad's uh, chat room. All right. So as you can see on the screen here, uh, it did capture that I was uh, on RF coming in. And uh, you can see here that I was up there. So there you go. 20, uh, 20 minutes, start to finish. Not super hard, pretty easy to do. If you have any questions, please put those down in the comment section below. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Share this video with your friends. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. And until we have an opportunity to meet on the air, I have a video right over here that I think you might be interested in.